Oh, welcome back to the show. Check out these headlines. The next Great Depression. Never let a good crisis go to waste. And what's Eathgate got to do with any of it? A lot. We got that and so much more. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, it's $2.83 trillion market cap for crypto. Hello. Crypto woke up over the weekend. Okay, I got it. I might well go for a little jog today, too. Yeah, look at this. Bitcoin, 72,100 plus. Come on in. 3,600 plus for Ethereum right now. 106.8 billion market cap for crypto. Uh, Tether uh, right now. And 60 cents for XRP. It's nice to see it come out of the 50 cent range today. Uh, up 1.9, however, on the 24. And still off by 0.7 on the 7 day. So maybe it's coming out for a little jog. Bitcoin certainly decided up over 72 grand now. We love seeing that. 60 cents, as we said, we're ranging between 50 59 61 cents we'll keep an eye on as the day goes i want to remind you guys right now xrp las vegas yeah setting records every day we're 24 days away can you believe it the last 10 and a half 11 months of my life and my wife's life is about to reach its pinnacle we are so excited to bring this conference to you. We've been working so, so very hard to put all of this together. together, And I tell you, I cannot wait for all of you to see it, what we have planned, a new era of finance. That is the theme of this year's conference. The agenda is in the FAQ section of the website. All you gotta do is scroll down here and go to the FAQs and you can open up the agenda in the first question. Will there be an agenda? There is one. And I have it here for you and you can take a look at it very quickly. This is how packed the day is here. Fruition Productions XRP Unleashed documentary is going to start the day, ladies and gentlemen. And then it's going to go on from there. Ripple uh, Uphold Partnership Discussion, White Labeling for Banks with CEO of Uphold, Simon McLaughlin and Chief Revenue and Marketing Officer Nancy Beaton on stage. And it just continues to go on and on and on. We have the Digital Chamber, the Policy Discussion, the fight on Capitol Hill to stop the crypto ban with Perry Ann Boring. You're going to want to see all of this. You want to learn about automated market makers? Well, not only is David Schwartz going to be there on Saturday, but you're going to want to hear some of these people that are building and developing on the XRP ledger in the EVM, like Farhan Pratt, who's built the bridge from EVM to XRP ledger from Pearsist, or Jeff from Moy Finance, who is doing automated market makers through Moy Finance. There's so much to learn, I'm telling you. Please do not mess around and get your ticket for XRP Las Vegas. It is going to be a remarkable time. And share the uh, and share this agenda with everybody. And we'll have agenda posted at the conference. But get your tickets, ladies and gentlemen, because I tell you, this is going to be a remarkable, remarkable event. There's no question about it. All right, let's go back to the homepage here. 24 days left. I just can't believe it. It's so surreal. I'm so excited. And here is the documentary, and today we're going to talk about some very important things because this documentary has hit more than 1 million views, ladies and gentlemen. More than 1 million views. And this is not even the film finished yet. And they will be filming two days at XRP Las Vegas, which you will have an opportunity to be in the film too. So all you got to do is get your ticket and come. Now, what's important here is, is to tie all of this together. Why is this so important? Well, I'm a macro investor. I'm watching trends all the time inside of crypto and outside of crypto that can affect this space and the technology and innovation within it. And this here is an article that came out and shout out to my main man, Ron, for sending this over. U.S. money supply is doing something no one has witnessed since the Great Depression. Uh-oh. You know, I've oftentimes said that, you know, uh, understanding and finding Ripple and XRP is almost bittersweet because it is really designed, I believe, to come in to the financial system at a time when the financial system is at one of its greatest stress points. I truly do believe that. Here we go down into this. And what I want to show you is the U.S. money supply hasn't done this in nine decades. 
Very quickly here, among the five measures of money supply, there's M1 and M2 tend to garner the most focus from economists and the investing community. M1 money is the measure of cash coins in circulation, as well as demand deposits in a checking account. It's money you have easy access to that can be spent immediately. On the other hand, M2 money is a supply accounts for everything of M1 and also adding in saving accounts, money market accounts, and certificates of deposits known as CDs, as you well know, and below 100000 And this is money you can still access, but it's much harder to get to. Now, most economists and investors tend to pay very little attention to M2 money supply because it's grown in such consistency over time. Since the U.S. economy expands over long periods, it's only natural that more cash and coins are needed to complete transactions. But in those extremely rare instances where notable contraction in M2 money supply has been observed, trouble has historically followed for the U.S. economy and the stock market, meaning... Two years ago, in March 2022, M2 money supply reached approximately $21.71 trillion based on the latest monthly data release from the Board of Governors and the Federal Reserve System. M2 clocked in at $20.78 trillion in February of 2024, basically $1 trillion shy, give or take, of where the collapse happened the last time we had trouble, right? As you can see in the chart above, this represents a relatively minor half percent year-over-year decline, but more pronounced is the 4.29% drop-off since March 2022. It's also first meaningful move lower uh, anyone has witnessed in M2 since the Great Depression. In one respect, 4.29 retracement U.S. money supply may simple, simply uh, be a reversion to mean that M2 money uh, expanded by a historical 26% on a year-over-year -year basis during the height of the uh, pandemic. Multiple rounds of fiscal stimulus flooded the U.S. economy with cash and consumers who were more than willing to spend it. On the other hand, more than 150 years worth of history has been pretty clear about what happens when M2 money supply retraces by more than 2% from a record high. And you can see from this chart, exactly right here from Nick Gearley, and uh, this is what we're looking at. 1870, 2% retracement, that was the 1870 depression. 3% retracement, the panic of 1893, 18% unemployment. 1921, depression, 11% unemployment. The Great Depression, led us to 12% or 25% unemployment and 12% retracement. Here's where we are today, 2% retracement, same as 1870s depression. Any questions? Why am I showing you this? I'm not showing you this to be an alarmist. I'm showing you this because the facts matter. History matters. Just like we look at previous charts and the history of XRP charts or Bitcoin charts. Now we're looking at money supply and what it is meant historically when we get in these areas. Now, why does that matter? Well, stay with me, because now we're going to turn it back to Ethgate, and you're going to soon find out why. Stay with me here. There's been a lot of negativity and talk trying to defame the people that are doing this film. Now, why is that? That's a question better asked and answered by the people who are actually trying to throw shade on this film. But what I want to be clear of, and this is very clear because it ties into this historical data. Stay with me. Ethgate isn't about Maxis fighting over which network is better. Ethgate is about holding our U.S. government agencies accountable because our tax dollars aren't supposed to be used to pick winners and losers in what is supposed to be an open free market. I don't believe ETH tokens are security in and of themselves. But what I understand to be fact is that a public official like Clayton and Hinman and others at the SEC decided to overlook an ICO fundraise, which was structured as a security offering, and then turned around and held the rest of the crypto space to an entirely different standard, allowing a token assembly line of billions of dollars worth of projects to be launched off of that network, harming every other project in the crypto space. Side note. If you ever want to know what clearly clarity can do for a network, just look at the ETH chart on the day of the Hinman free speech. Our tax dollars are supposed to be used to oversee the entire capital markets with the same set of rules for everyone, not just the one centrally backed by JP Morgan and the CCP, which is Ethereum's network. These facts are not up for dispute. You can go to John Deaton's page and you could go to cryptolaw.us and you can find out for yourself 
through the timeline and all the evidence that has been created. These are not up for dispute. These are facts. And anyone suggesting otherwise has missed the plot. Now, why does that matter when we're looking at the depression data? How am I tying that in? Because we're talking about value protocols that move value and settle payments, whether it's East Smart Contract Network or whether it's the XRP Ledger or any other protocol. This innovation is the new payment systems for the world. So you better understand that it matters. As Rahm Emanuel had said during the Obama administration, and he made it very clear, you never let a good crisis go to waste. Ladies and gentlemen, this looks like a good crisis coming. And you can bet your ass that the government's not going to let it go to waste. What we need to make sure of as American patriots in this world is we need to make sure that when this does, this crisis doesn't go to waste, that they don't allow the centrally controlled Ethereum network by JP Morgan and the CCP to be the winner until they rectify that situation. You must make sure that it is a decentralized network. And you must make sure that the CCP is not controlling that network. Otherwise, we're moving to a new system that's already been compromised. This is not hard to understand. Now, the narrative has been out here, and shout out to James O'Keefe from Veritas, uh, Project Veritas picking this up too. That's how big this is getting. And so many people out here are saying ETHgate is dead and it's time to move on. I wonder if those same people felt the same way about Sam Bankman-Fried or FTX and Celsius and Voyager and Mt. Gox and all of the other people that are still upset about the harm that's been done to them. Does that matter? I guess it doesn't matter to them how much everyone else has gotten burned. Maybe they're only concerned about their own portfolios. Here's what I know. As much as I love my portfolio, I want to leave our children with a country that's in better shape than we found it. Sometimes that means doing things you normally wouldn't care, want to do, or care to do. But that's what it means to be an American patriot. Making money is great, and I love making money, and I've made a lot of money, and I'm going to keep making a lot of money. But sometimes you have to pick which hill you're willing to die on. Leaving a better country for our children is a hill certainly worth dying on. Eatgate is very much real. And I personally can't wait to see the hard work that Empower Oversight is doing to ensure that our country's government agencies are acting in good faith. That's where we're at today. Stephen Nureyev, whistleblower, highlights here. The Ethereum cartel has been dragged into the limelight, and I assure you that more will follow suit soon. The progress we have made is huge, and those who are responsible for this will pay for their actions. We will not let this be just a bump in the road, but rather the end of their fraudulent practices. As with any other scam in the industry, it may take time, but we are presenting concrete evidence that will bring them down. We are on track, and it's only a matter of time before justice is served. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Because the next guy shouldn't have to go through what we've gone through. But there is a ton of negativity out in this space, and I think Digital Asset Investor has this right, and it's time for us to all acknowledge that it is out here and it's okay that they feel this way. But when I see that energy, this is how I deal with it too. He reminds us his first day at Morgan Stanley years ago, a guy walked up to me and points at one of the brokers and says, you see that guy over there? He's gone negative. Don't go near him. It will drag you down with him. Surround yourself with positive thinking people here. The negative guy was gone in days. I think I took his seat. True story. Les Brown, one of my favorite, favorite idols here in the motivation success world. I love this man, Les Brown. Don't waste another minute dealing with a toxic, negative, energy-draining person. Some people are wired for negativity. They love being argumentative, combative, and abusive. Run for your life as quickly as possible. That's what you're dealing with out here. And how can you not be excited about this space when you know that ETHgate is finally getting the traction from within the government sector 
inside the DC Beltway from Empower Oversight. DAI and I just went and personally went and explained Eastgate to Senator Chuck Grassley. You know why? Because you matter. You know why? Because our country matters. You know why? Because our country is not a perfect country. And it only gets better when we decide to step up and make it better. And pointing at things that are wrong does not make it better. Doing the things that are right makes it better. And how can you not be excited about this space? Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO, sees the combined market capitalization of crypto market topping $5 trillion this year. That means the market's going to damn near double from where we're at today. How about that? And it is true. Lion Kishner says, well, Brad also said banks crypto five year would be holding crypto five years ago. He's absolutely right, Brad said that. But you know what? I'm pretty sure that Brad Garlinghouse was not aware that the SEC was under regulatory capture when he made those comments because we weren't either. But we know the answer now, don't we? And coming back to the historical information on those charts about the U.S. dollar and the economy and understanding that we may be headed for yet another Great Depression, understand that the government will not let a good crisis go to waste and they will begin tokenizing real world assets. They will begin introducing value protocols to the world in this innovation known as DLT and crypto and digital assets. But you know what? We better make sure that we don't get fooled and what they put in place isn't going to be a viable solution because it's centrally controlled by the large banks and CCP. We can't allow that to happen. That has to change, right? Then we see this here. Dark Defender tells us here, XRP is ready for the monthly break, which is imminent when you check the monthly time frame below. He says here, I hear the ones XRP only goes sideways. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think starting this month, April, a lot of melting faces will be around. Expect the resistance will be eliminated in April. And the time has come towards the expect a move of $1, 188 and 585. We're on the precipice, according to the technical analysts out here. It's not financial advice for me or anyone else. That's going to do it for me. Uh, I'll catch all of you on the next one. Make sure you go to digperspectives.com. Great way to support the channel in the Freedom Zone. Uh, this is where we put extra content. We put all our daily videos in the Freedom Zone with zero Google ads. So make sure you join us there. I'll catch all of you on the next one.